We've identified over the first few years of the Catalyst for a Cure biomarker initiative a lot of progress figuring out what should we be looking for in glaucoma patients? What are the things that go wrong? What's happening in the biology of glaucoma that we could use to detect patients earlier in the disease or to figure out uh, who's getting worse and, and who's doing okay? Those are the most important questions that we really need to ask in glaucoma. This year has been an enormous step forward for us in developing the tools that we will use to transition our laboratory studies into human studies. And in particular, our two world-class lead engineering collaborators, Alf Dubra and Vivek Srinivasan, have been building the actual instruments that will be used to peer into patients' eyes and image their retinas and optic nerves at a level of detail never before seen. The progress we've made on building these tools this year is going to set us up for the coming year to start an intensive program of human subjects testing to really put these biomarkers to the test. So a biomarker can be many different things and when we set out to find a biomarker we discussed whether or not this was going to be some way of imaging into the eye and seeing whether or not the retina was sick or whether or not it was going to be based on a blood draw or some other measure. At the same time, we realized pretty quickly that there were some basic questions about biology of glaucoma that needed to be answered in order to better understand what would be a useful biomarker. So just to summarize what we found, there's been a long-standing issue in the field of whether or not specific types of ganglion cells, there are about 20 different types of ganglion cells, each one signals something different to the brain about the visual world. Some like motion, some tell your brain about colors, etc. Whether or not there are specific types of ganglion cells that are being lost in glaucoma, why would that be useful? Well, if it turned out that you were losing ganglion cells that respond, let's say, to motion early in the disease, then you could imagine designing visual field tests that would detect motion in particular and tell us whether or not people were losing certain kinds of ganglion cells long before pressure increases or holes in their visual field would show up. That would be wonderful because you could intervene with treatments very early and you can imagine monitoring the disease progression using essentially non-invasive measures. You also would have a target for eventually developing a cure. Halt the progress of neurodegeneration by going after those cells in particular, try and save them. And what we discovered was that in fact there are a certain group of cells in the retina, retinal ganglion cells, and a particular group of those ganglion cells which we call off cells. These are cells that respond whenever the room gets dimmer or there are decrements in light. Those are the ones that appear to be vulnerable at early stages of the disease, and those are the ones that are going to die first. So what does that mean? That means that one can devise visual field tests that specifically probe the health and integrity of the off cells. And so that's what we're doing now, and we think that in the end, the biomarker is, is going to be something like a visual field test or perhaps direct imaging of the off cells in the inner retina. And so we're chasing both those leads with full force, and we're, we're very excited about the progress. Now work in my laboratory is attempting to build upon the results in Dr. Huberman's laboratory uh, to use his finding that there are changes, specific early changes in, in one layer of the retina in early glaucoma and to develop biomarkers uh, for those changes based on the energy usage and the microvasculature in that layer. And these biomarkers can then be applied uh, in uh, glaucoma suspects or glaucoma patients to de detect disease earlier as well as to detect a progression um, much earlier at a stage where it can be uh, prevented through appropriate treatments. The work in Vivex labs uh, is very synergistic and collaborative with ours and one of the one of the main examples is the fact that we can now see uh, blood vessels and capillaries uh, non-invasively in humans, we can now take advantage of some of the mathematical tools that are really advanced, uh, developed by Vivek and his team, to actually quantify uh, those uh, blood vessels and, and the shape in three dimensions so that we can actually monitor and detect those really subtle changes that we're really targeting so that we can help uh, not only diagnose glaucoma earlier, but also for the people that have been treated for glaucoma, we hope that we're gonna be able to adjust their treatment very precisely so that we can minimize the, the vision loss that takes place. 
I think it's safe to say that within the next two, three years, that we will have something that doctors can use to evaluate patients to determine how quickly the disease is progressing, whether or not there's glaucoma in the first place, and what to do about it much better than current techniques, all based on the work that was done in the first three years of the CFC. I'm often asked, why is it taking so long to find a cure for glaucoma? And we are making enormous progress. In fact, so much of the progress that we're making in laboratories, including mine, on developing neuroprotective therapies that can protect the retina from degeneration, regenerate optic nerve fibers all the way back to their targets in the brain, even replace damaged retinal ganglion cells with cell therapies that completely rebuild the optic nerve. So we are making enormous progress, but how do we accelerate that into the clinic? Well, actually, this biomarker initiative dovetails perfectly with the research we're doing in regenerative ophthalmology because it's going to give us the tools to translate what we're doing in the laboratory into human subjects' trials. If we can't measure the positive effects of these candidate therapies, we can't hope to transition them into human subjects' trials. So this biomarker initiative, this Catalyst for a Cure initiative, is really catalyzing leaps forward in our ability to move candidate therapies out of the laboratory and into the clinic.